Hey beloved, Krista Pettiford here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to talk about distractions and the root of distractions and how to undistract yourself or to identify your distractions. So identifying your distractions, I guess that's what we'll call that. So first I'm going to talk about what is a distraction and what Jesus said about distractions when he was talking to Martha about her distractions. When he said that you are troubled and distracted uh, with many things. I want to go there now. So if you look last week and I'll put last week's video in, uh, the link right here, and it'll be a link in the description. There will be something about, um, there'll be last week's video and the prophetic word and encouragement slash teaching that the Lord gave me to share with y'all about distractions and, or about getting back to the feet of Jesus. And this week I want to go into another part. So I'm taking the time to break it down. And if you haven't yet, I want you to go and get my uh, 28 day lifestyle reset. Many people started it last week, but it's not too late to start it. Now you can start it anytime. Actually, you can start the lifestyle reset anytime. It's free. So I want you to go download that. And I think that after a busy summer and you might be distracted and not in your regular routine or not making the time with Jesus that you normally have. Maybe that's just me. I always make time for Jesus, but just really soaking in his presence. I did a lot of traveling and all of that. And so now God has caught me back to reset, but it's not just about a routine. It's about hearing him so he can guide me. There's things that he needs to tell me. There's new doors opening. There's doors closing. There's things that I need to know that only God can reveal to me in my prayer. It's not enough to get a prophet accord. It's not enough to get counsel. It's not enough to ask your friend, even though I believe that there's safety in a multitude of counsel, but there are some things that you have to get from God himself, sitting at his feet, hearing his word. And then that counsel is going to bear witness, that friend, that encouragement, that prophetic word will bear witness to what God has spoken to you. But God wants you to hear from him yourself. But first you have to get undistracted. So let's talk about what distractions are. The Bible says in Luke 10, and uh, we talked about this last week, Luke 10, verse 38. Now it happened as they went that he entered a village. Jesus and his friends were walking. They entered a village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. This is the same Mary and Martha who Jesus uh, raised their brother Lazarus from the dead. He became very close friends with them. And she had a sister called Mary who sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. So Martha was, she welcomed him into her house. There may have been other people there. I don't know. I imagine because he had friends and she was doing a lot of serving. And in the midst of all of this stuff that was going on, Jesus was speaking. He was sharing things from heaven's perspective. He was releasing his word. Can you imagine Jesus in the flesh? They may have thought they were going to have him there all that time. But even if we don't have him in the flesh and we only have the Holy Spirit, Spirit. He's speaking and people are busy doing things, but Mary sat at his feet, maybe with other people, who knows, but she made that her priority in the middle of the business when she could have been distracted. And she heard and listened to his word, but Martha was distracted. The Bible says with much serving. Some translation says much doing, much work, but much serving. And she approached Jesus and said to him, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone, to do all these things alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus said unto her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. He, he, he got into her business. He said, you are worried and troubled about many things. Let's talk about the root, the root of distraction. You are worried and troubled about many things. 
You are doing all this serving because you haven't quieted yourself. You got all kind of things going on in your head. Not only who, what you're doing right now and how you're serving, but there might be a whole bunch of things. I'm talking to you now on behalf of the Lord, rotating around in your head, anxiety, trouble, thinking about things, thinking them over and over again, things that may keep you up at night that you've learned to cope with that you may even think is normal now, that you're thinking on these things, that you carry this spirit of distraction. He said, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. You are anxious. That word troubled is means anxious and worried about many things, but one thing is needed. The thing that you think that you need to do God says, Mary chose the good part, the good portion that will not be taken away from her. So let me go back over here and talk about this word distracted. It means distributed, divided. You are, you are distributing yourself out too many places. Your attention is divided. You got too much going on. You're doing too much and you're divided. The Bible talks about peace. The, there's a definition of peace that means being set at oneness again, set at one where you're not divided. It's the opposite of this distracted, divided, cut in parts like a piece of pie. But when you are at peace, you are at oneness with yourself. You're not all over the place. You're not divided. And maybe I'm just speaking to myself and I need to speak to people who are like me, a recovering Martha who had, who has served so much. And when you get down to it, it's like, what are, what are you running from? What are you running from that you can't just, that you can't stop doing and just be with Jesus? Even in your prayer time, you got a whole list. You're, you've got all these things and Jesus says, just be. I know that you're worried. I know that you're troubled. I know that there's a lot of things going on. But if you come and you sit at my feet, then we'll get to the root of that worry. We'll get to the root of the thing that you're anxious or you're troubled about. The thing that you are thinking about. Those things that are distracting you and dividing your attention from me. And so the root of distraction is anxiety and worry about things that you can't do a lot about. Okay, let me go on over here to Matthew. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 7, it says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life more than food? Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than them? Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about your clothing? Why are you worrying about things that you can't do anything about? Consider the lily of the fields, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you, even Solomon in all of his glory, his decked out array was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God took care of, if he clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you and take care of you? Oh, you of little faith. Sometimes we don't have faith to trust in God and let him bring it to us. Like he brought the disciples. He said, go to the, the fish and there's going to be a coin in the mouth of this fish to pay the taxes that they needed to pay in that moment, in that season, when it was needed. Sometimes we're worried and God says, just trust me and sit here with me and go at a slower rhythm of grace. Don't worry, but trust me and do what I'm calling you to do in this moment, in this season, and what you need will be provided for you when you need it. But that's a lot of faith, whether it's whatever it is. It doesn't have to just be uh, material things. Therefore, do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For all these things, the Gentiles, the unbelievers seek after 
For your heavenly father knows that you need all these things. The Lord knows what you need. He will show you the path of life. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. And so the Lord wants you to not worry about the things of tomorrow. He doesn't worry about them. He doesn't want you to be worried and distracted about the things that are bothering you because it distracts you. It divides your attention and you're trying to figure things out. And the Lord says, do not worry about that. But seek first the kingdom of God. How do we seek God's kingdom first? Well, let's go on back over here to Luke chapter 10 by choosing him first by putting by by sitting at his feet and hearing his word in the midst of everything that's going on that is calling and vying for your attention your attention Jesus says Mary chose the good portion at Jesus feet hearing his word making him for first prioritizing him putting him at the top of our day and not just really quick. Some days are like that. It'd be like that sometimes. You only have a little bit of time, you know, and but in those moments, yeah, I remember when my kids were young and I was getting four young kids out the house, some teenager, middle school, elementary, high school, all the different things. And, but God in 20 minutes, God could speak into me. Why? Because I knew how to get to the feet. I wasn't distracted in my prayer time. I knew how to enter in with worship. I knew how how to sit at Jesus' feet and make time for him and turn out everything and hear from him in that moment to fill me up for the day, to give me his presence for the day that I could go out and do what he told me to do. It didn't always have to be a lot of time. It's the quality of time that we sit at his feet. And then I wasn't distracted with all these things pulling me different ways because God, I had set my day with Jesus. I had removed the distractions. And so I want to talk a little bit because I said I would about how to identify your distractions. You, what robs you of your time? That's how you identify your distractions. You put, you list the things that matter to you, your goals and the things that you want to do, the things that God has called you to do, your God-centered, Christ-centered goal and goals. And then you watch, even if it takes you some time, if you can't think of it now, begin to pay attention to the things that pull you away and write those down. And then you figure out a way to deal with them. And that's in my 28-day lifestyle reset workbook. So I won't get into that. But if you want to find out how to make a plan to deal with your distractions after you identify them, then you can get the workbook. I won't take up a lot of time. You can download the free workbook, but there's a whole bunch of steps in there to do that. And next week, I'm going to talk about reclaiming your time by creating a daily routine based off of the things that really matter to you. So if you are following this series, then I want you to prepare to think about the things that really matter to you that God has called you to do, because we're going to talk about how to create a routine. So I hope this bless you. Please share it uh, with someone who it would encourage. God bless you. And this is all about getting back to the feet of Jesus. So I want, I, I just encourage you. Um, this is not so much about all the different goals, but when we get our distractions away and we get rid of them, then we have time to Put Jesus first and prioritize the things that matter to us, the things that are of eternal value and of earthly value um, and not just waste our time with all the other busyness. And so God is calling us back to that, beloved. And so I pray that you would um, this video would be a help to you and it would equip you to navigate the season that you are in with clarity, courage and confidence. God bless you.